It's good fun. Days like these are, are great. You get the whole industry together. Um, and to have you know, companies um, and corporations like Interbet and Cape Racing who are uh, so generous with um, sort of time and, um, and energy into, into making a day like this possible, is, uh, it's, it's fantastic for everyone. Right, time for the feature. The seventh race is the listed Mark Roberts Stakes, and uh, it's over 1750 meters. It's always a very good race. And again, we've got some decent horses who are uh, taking their chances here. But let, before we talk about them, let's have a look at some uh, reruns. Crown Towers, Tristful, interviews with Peter Musket, Donovan Dillon, Terry Fripp, and Mark Dixon. Side and Gigi's Dynasty, 300 metres to go though, Crown Tower still with the lead, Tristful Favour, Gentleman's Wages down the inside, then New Stream, but Crown Tower still finds on the lead at the 150, and it's Crown Towers not for the catching, Crown Towers will win, second will go to Gentleman's Wager, then Tristful and Favour. Again, Ikigai, new stream. Tristful's going to look for a way through. Sir Michael to the outside. Sound of summer. Ikigai's along the inside. Let's twist again is coming with a powerful run. Tristful's on the inside. Ikigai hit the front. On the outside, running on from behind. Gentleman's wager. Ikigai, Tristful's on the inside. Ikigai from Tristful. Sound of summer on the inside. And then photos in behind that. Unfortunately, the Michael Roberts Stakes is tailor-made for your top three rated horses, being a pinnacle-style handicap. Um, your second-tier horses are not getting a chance. Uh, should be a long handicap in these in these listed races, but the powers that be have made the decision not to not to structure the race like that. So that brings uh, gentlemen's wager and tread swiftly in under sufferance with your top top horses. But in saying that, they ran very well under similar conditions at their last starts, being beaten just over a length, both of them. Um, step up to 17.50 should suit both. Uh, they were both running on strongly at their last start. Uh, they too are in good order, and uh, I wouldn't discount either of them. Gigi's dynasty loves Scottsville. He ran a close-up race last time, being beaten a length and three quarters. Um, in the future, but uh, he's he's a tricky customer, um, tiny little horse and a massive heart. Uh, like you said, he does love Scottsville, and uh, I think, look, if things go away, um, we won't leave him out of out, out of anything. Yes, he has, and uh, his record speaks for itself. Unfortunately, he seems to be on paper the proverbial bridesmaid. Keep running second to a lot of good horses, and um, just. Couldn't get his head on with, on the line where it mattered most last time out in the King's Cup. Joe Biggles had to find us on the day. Um, he's very well in himself. Always puts up his best. He's as honest as the day is long. You know, he's only a four-time winner little running off a mark of 1-1-3. But uh, ne ne having said that, draw 12 is not easy when you've got Crown Towers drawn one. But Sean knows him better as well as he knows his own family. So, <laughs> so yeah, we do expect him to run in the money. Unfortunately... Um, weather looking ahead doesn't look promising for Scottsville, but we'll keep our fingers crossed and hope you stay there. Because the last time you ran in the Michael Roberts, they did move it to the poly two years ago and he got beat ahead and lost a shoe at the start. So we'll be there when the are cracking and he's, uh, he's a strong boy and he's honest. His work is very good lately and he won't let us down. New stream, unfortunately, obviously he won this race last year, but we've got a terrible draw to overcome. Ashton knows him well. He seems to run for Ashton better than uh, anybody. Uh, hasn't been quite up to scratch his last couple of runs, but he seems very well. He worked particularly well uh, this week, so um, if we can get a bit of luck in running, let's hope. Well, Dees, it's a good race. It's a good race. I, again, you and I are very much together on our, our selections. I think they're all going to have to Really go, but to beat Crown Tower. I don't know where Terry Smith found to draw one. It's drawn two. Yes. Uh, uh, Asterix has drawn one. Now, Crown Tower has got good form. Galloper keeps on doing it right. He's the general you have left. He is the general, and um, 
We had Peter Musket uh, briefly touch on uh, the way the weights are structured, and you go to the best weights at Colomy, top stat at 114, ahead of Trisville and Asterix at 110, Capriero at 108, and Gigi Stinity at 106. But coming back to Crown Towers, he had a tough five-year-old campaign. They were not shy to travel him up to Gauteng for feature races, and then towards the end of last season, the World Sports Betting 1900, the Cup Trial, the Vodacom Durban July, the Champions Cup. Of course, he won... <clears throat> excuse me, the sledgehammer and the cup trial as well. So, you know, he had a hard campaign. They gave him the time off. His first run back went horribly wrong. Drawn 11 out of 11. You can't read into that run at all. He was just eased out of the race by Anton Marcus. He set the record straight last time out. To the front where he likes to be 61 and a half kgs on his back. The weight seldom bothers him. He carries the weight well. He's got the run of the race from draw two. And... Um, Whilst there is lots of form to go around with the, the, the local runners and Asterix representing some very good feature race form, the Charity Mile, the Victory Moon, the Summer Cup, the London News, I think that he is the horse they're going to have to try and catch when they turn into the straight at Hollywood Bet Scottsville. Yeah, and, uh, look at Trisville, as Terry said, a little bit of a bridesman, but a very honest bridesman. Trisville is running some good races, and I think one of the highest rated Natal horses in the country at 112, I think will run well, but it is drawn 12, so uh, the, it, it might find itself in a position, because I think there's speed in the race. As you know, the horse we like, I think, likes to dictate Crown Tower, but there are some horses in this race, the likes of Asterix, the last of the, the musket trio, Trisful, they've all uh, they've all got chances. And you can add Capiero to that yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, Andre Nell's runner, who uh, famously ran third uh, to Hawam and yes. Twist of Fate and got that hike in his rating yeah. from an 81 to 115. But credit to the horse, Paul. You know, he's around 115, 110. He's, he's been holding that rating very well. You know, yeah. he's, he's yeah. always seems to run well. Number four, Copiero. You know, he's a runner that I'll give a mention to if you're not in the camp of Crown Towers. But yeah. I'm in agreement with Paul. Uh, if you don't like Crown Towers like we do on the show, uh, look at Asterix, look at Capriero, both the runners from the Musket Stable, Gentleman's Wage and Gigi's Dynasty, and then uh, the even Tread Swiftly. Yeah. Tread Swiftly as well has to go in. And then 12, Trisville. Those look to be the runners that could pose a threat if... Crown Towers is uh, not on his A game, but I suspect that he will be from that draw point. Yeah, maybe already. Yeah, we're going to go with uh, the Michael Roberts handicap to possibly one from the informed stable of Justin Snaith. And of course, owner Nick Johnson uh, owning this in partnership with Nancy Hosack. And what a run. Uh, Justin said, what a run Justin Snate's having, Paul. I mean, the, that double header, that Queen's Plate Festival, he just stole the show. Yeah, he did. He's got a lot of horses. He ran 59 over the two days, but yes. uh, he produced the goods, you know, and he won a big race, and the horse, unfortunately, had come out the gate earlier. The backup horse took the, <laughs> so, so, took the so. honors. No, he's got, yeah. he? he's a big buyer, he's a big purchaser, he gets lots of horses, he trains lots of horses, but they win the races. Yeah, you still have to get the job done. And, That's um, right. That's winning right. all the graded features on those two days, uh, the five graded features on the day, and now well clear on the trainer's log as well, Justin Snade. And hopefully he can add the Michael Roberts handicap to his name at Hollywood Bets Scottsville on Sunday. <laughs> I bet with Interbet only. They're a fantastic site. I've never had any issues with them. They are very professional. There's never a problem. You deposit money. Two seconds later, it's in your account. You withdraw, which I do very occasionally. And uh, I believe it's also two seconds it's in your account.